the Enlightenment brought together the ideas of the Renaissance, Reformation, and Scientific Revolution, culminating in the events that brought about the application of reason to the social and political world, the use of many ideas that have been building up over the previous centuries, and looking at how governments and people's lives could work better. The origins of the Enlightenment went back to Renaissance culture, with its, uh, its culture of questioning, its culture of humanism, its culture of skepticism in general, ideas that have been mainly focused in the high intellectual classes. But in the Enlightenment, they start to trickle down more into the common people, especially with the growing middle class uh, post-commercial and capitalist revolution. It was also in many ways a reaction to the religious wars. People across Europe, by the latter part of the 17th century, had decided that people couldn't just continue to kill each other over reasons of religion. The European society was suffering as a result, and new ways had to be found to live together. There also was a significant influence of the scientific revolutions, particularly in the ideas of the scientific method and, and using reason and logic to figure out the natural world could also be applied to uh, the world of politics and society. And also the traditions of liberty that were present throughout Europe for a very long time, going back to ancient Greece and Rome, and even those that came out of the mid Middle Ages, such as the Magna Carta in England. Two of the earliest writers of the Enlightenment period were Thomas Hobbes and John Locke. They looked at various aspects of political, social life, and the nature of human beings in the middle part and late part of 17th century England. With the backdrop of the revolutions and religious wars going on in England, uh, the fight between king and parliament at the time, uh, deciding what kind of constitution and what kind of country uh, England would be. Thomas Hobbes, who wrote uh, in the period after the English Civil War and saw the chaos and devastation of it, argued that human nature needed to be controlled, that humans were anim uh, naturally animalistic. And therefore, he advocated a type of government that was very strong and would be one of those who would push more towards the ideas of absolutism, a government under one king or ruler who had complete control over the country. John Locke, however, who was writing about 30 years later, during a time when the Glorious Revolution in England was going on and gave more power to Parliament relative to the king, saw human nature as a blank slate, or tabula rasa, that through education and socialization, humans could learn to be good or bad. And this gave them the possibility of developing government where they were involved through a social contract. Uh, this form of constitutionalism, which put limits on the power of government, and particularly the power of monarch, gave the right to people to rebel against their monarch or to or pick a new government if that government wasn't working effectively. One of the centers of Enlightenment thought during the 18th century was France. And one of the first of the philosophers, as they're known in French, French philosophers to do this was Voltaire, who criticized the absolutist government that had been developing in France over the previous several centuries in response to the chaos of the religious wars. Because of this, he was imprisoned for a time and then later fled to, by this point, religiously tolerant England. He admired English government with its constitutional balance and also the religious toleration that was developing in England, certainly compared to that of France and other parts of Europe. As part of this, he advocated government based on reason and liberty again, building upon the constitutional ideas of John Locke. One of the philosophical ideas uh, built upon by Voltaire and other philosophers at the time that had an impact on religion was the idea of deism. And this idea developed specifically from the uh, ideas of, of Newton and others that saw uh, the universe working uh, in its natural laws uh, without the influence of God. And this deism proposed the idea of God as the first mover. He designed the universe he designed his laws, put it in motion, but then was not involved in human affairs, uh, creating uh, miracles or disasters or sending holy beings, uh, angels or demons or anyone else to become involved in, in those affairs. Um, it is uh, similar to the idea of the clockmaker, that God himself is the great clockmaker and that uh, started the clock but then had let it run uh, and interrupted. Deism would influence many philosophers both in Europe uh, and America, including many American founding fathers. Diderot was another uh, French philosopher and contemporary of Voltaire. He was also imprisoned by the French government for many of his writings, but he's most famous for the composition of the Encyclopedia, a uh, 
multi-volume multi body of work that was designed to bring together as much knowledge about science and philosophy and government as possible, uh, written by the various philosophers and scientific uh, investigators of the time. The Baron de Montesquieu, another influential French philosopher with the spirit of the laws in the middle part of the 18th century. And his most significant contribution to that is this idea of advocating the separation of powers between the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branch. These ideas would later influence many governments, most particularly the American government, with its executive, the president, the legislative, the Congress, and the judicial, the court system. Jean-Jacques Rousseau was one of the philosophers of the latter part of the 18th century, and he wrote much about education and government advocating educational system that focused more on experience than book learning at a young age. He also advocated a radical social contract, much more so than anything Voltaire or Locke or anything else called for, calling for total equality uh, to be designed into the system of government and society. He would have a big impact on the French Revolution, and then later uh, philosophers and uh, revolutionaries arguing for more equal society in the 19th century. The Enlightenment, of course, was not limited to Europe. It would have a major impact on the world in general, and particularly on America. Uh, Tom Paine, who was an Englishman who had emigrated to America, uh, wrote Common Sense in the, the early years leading up to the American War of Independence, advocating many Enlightenment ideas uh, along with independence for the American colonies. Ben Franklin, uh, one kind of prototypical American Renaissance man, a uh, businessman, a scientist, a uh, obviously political philosopher and involved in government, was in many ways uh, our greatest renaissance, our enlightenment thinker. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, and many different things he was involved in, most notably the writing of the Declaration of Independence, one of the great enlightenment documents for the ideas that it expressed. And then even later documents of the American Revolution, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, were greatly have, uh, heavily influenced by uh, European enlightenment thought. The impact of the Enlightenment was significant. The ideas that come out of it, politically and socially, uh, would impact social thinking and political thinking and the development of government throughout the late 18th century, the 19th century, 20th century, to the present. Its ideas also would immediately greatly impact the coming political upheavals uh, of the latter part of the 18th century and early 19th century in the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the other revolutions that spread across Europe and revolutions in Latin America and Haiti.